I'm here today with Mary Lou Forward from the Open Educational Consortium. Welcome, Mary Lou. Hi, thank you. Can you share briefly a bit about yourself and your role at the Open Education Consortium and why you chose to serve in this role, please? Sure. So I'm Mary Lou Ford. I am the executive director of the Open Education Consortium, and I actually came from a more traditional academic background. And my work there was working in African studies, and we were doing some interesting projects that were trying to expose as many students as possible to the realities of contemporary Africa. And what I realized was that it was really difficult to share. And then all of a sudden, somebody told me about open educational resources, and I thought, this is exactly what education should be. Education is about sharing, it's about building knowledge, it's about taking what other people have done and making it better. And so uh, when I found out about it, I thought this is what I want to be involved in as my next phase in life. And I was lucky enough to find this particular uh, opening and have been really enjoying watching the growth of the movement and the impacts that it's having on global education. Thanks for sharing more about how you got interested in this. You men mentioned the concept of open educational resources. How can, how can that be defined for people who might not know what that means? So open educational resources is actually a very um, easy concept. What it means is that educational resources that everybody uses for teaching and learning now are currently held behind a copyright barrier, which means that the author of those resources owns them, and even if they want to share them under copyright law, it actually restricts users from having easy access to them and being able to modify them for their own purposes. So Open Educational Resources says, education is about sharing, let's make it easy to share, and therefore you use an open license on top of your resource that gives people legal permission to reuse that resource to make changes like translating or adding new examples or changing out some of the content um, to make it more uh, fit to their own purposes. And then they can use those resources and share them with other people. So instead of reinventing the same course, the same materials at each institution, this allows us to have a worldwide a collective resource that people can access, that people can change, that people can add to, and really makes it very enriching and easier to collaborate, to share, and to modify uh, the ways that you're teaching so that it can be more personalized and more effective for the students. So how would you explain open licensing being different from other types of licensing? Sure, so if you are um, a creator of a work, be that a piece of art, a piece of music, or a, an academic piece, a, a teaching resource, or an article, you automatically own the copyright to that, which means that uh, it's your work and that you have you can do what you like with it, but other people can't use it unless they ask you first. And open licenses actually doesn't take that away. You still own your work. You can still do what you want with it. But what it does is it says, we allow you to use the work in these following ways. And so you as the author can tell people how you want them to use the work in advance. So for every open license, you have to give the author credit for coming up with the original work. So there's an attribution component to every open license. But in addition to that, you can tell people, for example, I want you to use this work in any way uh, that makes sense for you. Use this to put it in a book chapter or use this in your classroom or use it for your own learning. Or you can say to people, I want you to use this work in any way that makes sense to you, except you can't make money for it, from it. And so that's the non-commercial clause. And there are different restrictions that you can put on the way you want to share your work. But basically, an open license works on top of copyright, and it's completely legal. And it just tells people in advance, if you want to do these things with my work, go ahead. Um, just make sure you give me credit for it and follow the other terms of the license, and you don't need to get additional permission. So you talked a, a bit about how education is sharing. How can you see this concept of open licensing benefiting the educational community further in the future? Yeah, we've seen a lot of impact of this already. So for example, uh, there are projects in open education that's been happening around the, around the country and around the world. In, uh, in Arizona, the Maricopa Community College District, for example, has a very big OER project in which they're trying to substitute some of their paid materials with open educational resources. Faculty members there have customized 
the kinds of workbooks that they give to students based on what their students need. So they're able to have a customized textbook based on other people's resources, but also change that throughout the semester. So that if they see their students are struggling with a particular concept, they can bring in additional resources, add that right into the workshop, put it into the LMS, and students can benefit from that immediately. They don't have to wait until the exam to see where the problems are, or they don't have to buy another resource to make up uh, understanding that they might not have. So it's allowing people to really personalize what the students need from a class, and the faculty can respond to that almost immediately. Another way that OER is really helping the sharing is by creating collaborations. So we're seeing faculty collaborate across institutions to find resources, to improve resources, to add different examples. We've seen people translate courses so that it can be used in different countries. We've seen people take parts of one course and then add their own part to it and put it back out into the open, and the same with textbooks. So it's really allowing uh, both academic freedom and the ability to really focus in on what students need to be successful. Mary Lou, you've shared some, some really great thoughts for for the community to think further about how they can use open education resources to help in their education process. Are there any last minute thoughts that you have that you might want to share with us about open education resources? Yeah, you know, there's a whole world out there that people don't know enough about. So the most important thing is to just get started. Try to find some resources. Start with something small. Substitute in some openly licensed pictures for uh, cop fully copyrighted photographs in your PowerPoint presentations, for example. And once you get started, you see that it's actually quite easy to do. And it, then it gets you excited to do more and more. And when you see the results of the students, when they're engaged, when they're giving you responses that they are very satisfied with the course, that they feel the teacher is more motivated, that also um, continues your motivation to want to incorporate more OER. So the most important thing is Give it a try, um, and you'll see that it's really actually easy to use, and it's a really effective way to be teaching. Thanks so much, Mary Lou, for your time. And um, there'll be a website uh, along with this video so people can come and visit the Open Education um, Educational Consortium, um, where there are lots of great resources there for them to learn more about this as well. Great. Thank you very much.